Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, here I just have a very little video for you today. Uh, it, it's not really going to be a tutorial of any sort. It is more of just a showcase of what I've been learning lately. Um, so some of you that might know, um, I've, I've been doing a lot of work within Unity and Wise over the past year on my little game audio adventures. Um, but lately I wanted to just change things up a little bit and I wanted to start learning Unreal Engine. Uh, I have friends who have been using Unreal Engine for a while and it, it seems very exciting. It seems in many ways different but the same to Unity. So as I fly around this universe, it might seem very familiar to you because it is the actual map that they created for the sound design and procedural sound Unreal course. However, when you get the course, um, you, you, you get a full version of the map of all the sounds that they've put in themselves. But you also get this little blank one down here. Um, so, so what I've been doing in my spare time over the last few days is just going into it and just adding different sounds here and there. So if I hit play up here, I'll just show you in-game uh, some of the sounds that I'll be showcasing. So as I stand still, you can hear little things going on. So the little fire at the right hand side, you can hear with the fish. You can hear this water well in front of us, obviously closer I remove to it. And it'll pan left and right. You can hear very faintly just coming in now is this windmill. Uh, one thing I've added and I'll show you later is actually the little the little creaks that the windmill does. Uh, I'll show you how I've added that in without it becoming too repetitive. You have the fish over here that crackles with the fire and then the actual fat dripping off the fish you can hear just every now and again. Um, you'll have this which is a blacksmith just chopping away some wood and, and you can imagine if he was here obviously he would have a little sword or a little axe that he'd be working with this is why you get the chinking sound obviously as well as I move around you can hear a distinct panning of like the birds uh, they feel like they're all around you but I'll show you later that these are actually coming from uh, direct objects uh, with spatialization attached. As I get closer you'll hear these pigs. Uh, you don't really get them until you reach the fence because obviously they're only small pigs. You, you wouldn't hear them like all the way over there in the village. And I've added ju just a little bit of munching grass as well as they're doing this munching grass animation. And I suppose then the last thing that I've done so far is this other fire crackling and then another bee swarm up here by the lamp. So if if I just quickly break down what has been happening there. Um, so if I start first and foremost with the windmill. It's quite a simple-ish uh, blueprint. Um, so, so, so basically what happens is you have three different audio files. This windmill loop, a barrel roll, and a barrel slide. And I basically just mix them together in this mixer. But every now and again, uh, there's this little creak sound that plays. <laughs> Which I managed to just get online, and, and that's basically just someone's door creaking as it as it opens. Uh, but that is going through this modulator, which actually differs the um, the pitch by 0.5, and also the volume. It could either be as low as mine 0.3, or it can be as high as 0.8. Um, this is because with it being just the one sound, I really don't want this one becoming repetitive. Um, because obviously if, if the windmill did creak, the creak every time that, that, that it would have creaked in real life, uh, it would sound similar, but it wouldn't sound the exact same. Um, so using the modulator rather than using loads of different audio files, uh, it, it gives off the desired effect here. Um, and then also to, to stop repetition becoming a big issue, I've set the, the minimum delay to be 2 seconds and the maximum to be 10. Because it, as you've seen in the game, the actual windmill um, is quite slow. Um, like if I turn on the volume here, 
Obviously I know the windmill won't be turning, but you'll get the idea. So you can hear just like a very low pitch creak coming in there. And another one a bit higher pitch. So it sounds like a, a distinct sort of creaking sound because it's coming from that one part of the windmill. It might just be one little part in the rotor system here that actually is creating the creak. So obviously it would sound pretty similar. So that's how I've just added a little bit more ambience to the windmill itself. If I go over to the well, that, that again is on a similar sort of concept. Uh, search where it is and then open. So you have these little water trickles and a little well loop, which again is being mixed in here. Uh, but every now and again, you will just get a random dripping sound. As you hear there. And again, that's modulated by pitch and volume, which is quite drastic there. And that's because obviously drips can either be big or small. Um, and and if, if multiple drips happen after one another, you want the drips to be sounding different because obviously you'll have some big drips and some little ones. Um, and then if we look into delay, I've actually put the minimum delay to be zero. This isn't too bad as this means that it, it just happens consecutively. Uh, so if I play this twice, that doesn't sound too odd in my opinion. Uh, obviously I know it's happening quickly after one another, but it, it doesn't really throw off the whole effect of the drips because you can have ones that drip straight after another. But again, I've put the maximum delay up to two seconds, uh, and this is because there might be a long time before the next drip comes in. Uh, and then we loop that, it goes into a mixer, and then it goes to the output. So if we simulate that, It is only quiet as well. Uh, I've decided to do this on purpose um, because obviously when when the well starts dripping, um, you don't you don't want it to be very loud because obviously the, the bottom of the well will be well under this map. Uh, it, it won't be right at the top uh, as most wells don't really filter the brim. They, they normally go down to the water source. Um, so what I have done here, as you can see, the little oh, there's a tree there. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, the actual attenuation sphere is quite dramatic. So if I go down to my attenuation settings, as you can see, the inner radius only really just covers the areas like the path that is actually near the well. The rest of it is all fall off, um, so, so you'll hear it a little bit as you're walking along this path or going to the meadow this way. Um, but, but obviously with it being underground, you don't want it to be that standout-ish. Uh, obviously you want the ambience to be there or else you don't want just a silent well sitting there in the middle of the village. Um, but yeah, so this is why this is quite drastic and even with the windmill and that, it is hard to hear unless it is pointed out. But it's nice to have it there because it just adds a little little bit of realism to the game. So, again, some very similar concepts going on here. So, like the blacksmith, because that's quite loud. That attenuation is quite big. So, obviously, if as you're walking past on the path, uh, you're getting covered by the inner sphere. Uh, so, you can't avoid this sound. Um, but it's got a large fall-off because, obviously, if it's a very large sound... You'll hear it as you're coming into the village because he'll be absolutely smacking the sword or whatever he is crafting on his little table. One problem I had with this, um, because one thing I wasn't, I, I didn't find out until later, um, I, I, I would have set this up, uh, which again is a very simple one, just a random blacksmith hits going into a random and a modulator, mod, ju just modulating the volume this time with three different looping values so you got three six and two uh, so this means that the the blacksmith can can either hit it hit, hit his sword six two or three times obviously this would change a little bit if there was actually a blacksmith character model here uh, because then obviously you would sync up the hits uh, as he was actually hitting what whatever he was working on whether it be a sword or what have you um, but because there's no one there, we just wanted to create the general ambience of it. 
Um, so this just gives it a random count, but also doesn't make it sound like he's just hitting it once or if he's just hitting it 10 times. It he, he gives it a distinct sort of pattern and rhythm to the hitting. And then this all goes into a random to choose a different loop, but there's also a little drop sound as if he's just dropping his gear or dropping the sword he was working on. As you can hear, nice and quiet there. Uh, and that's just delayed from anywhere between 0 and 2 seconds. But the major problem I was having with this is that I would play the cue in here and it would work exactly as expected. But then I would go into game, press play or real time volume and I wouldn't hear anything. So then I'd be here messing around in, in the properties, I'd allow a spatialization in that and then I would suddenly hear it and I'm like, okay, what is happening here? I realised that in the voice management, it was set to restart. Um, so obviously, if if, if it was um, if, if it's an actual looping sound, so if I had this one hit absolutely looping for infinity, um, it would restart when I went out. Unfortunately, because because I spawned into the radius, uh, it, it didn't allow the sound to play because obviously it isn't a looping one. Um, so just flipping this to disabled uh, allowed me to actually uh, g go in and, and sort this problem. It did take me a while and a bit of research online to figure out what was happening, but I'm, gl I'm glad I got there. Another thing I'll just say about some of these sounds I'm working on, I have also allowed uh, attenuation and spatialization. Um, so obviously I've allowed this because if a blacksmith is sitting here on this table, you want the sound to be coming from here. Um, you don't want you don't want to suddenly come into here and the blacksmith sound like he's all around you because he, he is coming from this one distinct part. Um, it, as with many of these sounds, including like the pigs and, and what have you, and the fires and the torches and the lamps, um, they, they, they're all there to, because they're coming from a specific object. The only one um, that I haven't added this to, as you can see it's just greyed out here, is the village wind. So this is quite a big uh, sphere because obviously this is the wind that you just want to hear in the village. Um, so, so obviously, as I work on more areas in this little demo, um, when you reach to like the lake here or the lake here or, or even like the meadow over here, that might have a different sort of wind because like this is protected more by the trees and what have you. That one's a more open one because it's on the lake. Um, so obviously, as I do that and I, I choose different ambiences for all these areas, I'll just make sure there's a big crossover where this fall off is basically um, but for now that this just covers the main uh, wind bit so one thing that I could have done like the wind but I decided not to were these blackbird ones so as, as you can see here in the right hand world outliner um, I have actually got four blackbird spheres so I've got one in this tree here one in that tree over there Another one over there, and another one there. So if we imagine the village as a sort of big box going... I know it's a, not a very equal box, but yeah, j j just sort of covering this sort of area. Um, what I wanted to happen, because obviously if birds in real life, you would hear them coming from the trees. Um, so obviously here, um, I've, I've had the inner sphere mainly in the air which which obviously the, the the character will never get up to because he doesn't have flying powers in this game um but as you notice with with each of these the fall off radius is quite dramatic and and the fact of that is is because as you're walking around you want to hear the birds actually coming from the trees so obviously with more dense tree areas as in this background you can see there's a lot of overlap with these spheres. Uh, I know it's quite messy but but obviously like here where there's a lot of trees and you're surrounded by a lot uh, you will actually get quite a lot of voices of blackbirds coming in your direction and I know this is quite um, as, I say, as I say voice hungry um, which, which obviously we, we try not to do in game audio but just for this demo I decided to do it to, to showcase like how 
how diverse it makes the birds sound rather than just having a constant loop playing in your ears in stereo. It's nice to have different ones chirping from different trees because it feels like it's around you. Um, and then, then for example, if a long loop's going on in this tree and the player suddenly turns round, that certain loop is still happening uh, behind you, uh, which again just adds to the immersion like the actual birds are coming from the trees. So that's what I decided to do here. Don't get me wrong, if uh, if this started to be a bit too hungry, I would just have to change it to another loop, uh, like a stereo loop. But for now, I, I liked the effect that it had on the village, uh, and I decided to keep it just for now. Uh, but one thing I, I do want to show on this is, obviously, as I've shown, I've gone down here and I've, like, altered the attenuation to it for a lot of sounds um, but with this one being four distinct spheres that I wanted to be pretty much the same because obviously the blackbirds around the village would have a similar sort of volume uh, I decided to actually create an attenuation uh, which is really simple uh, and it basically just saves the headache of going into each one uh, and altering stuff so, so obviously if the game director come to me and was like, oh, we actually need the fall off radius of all of the birds to be larger, it would literally just be as simple as increasing that, and Bob's your uncle, there we go. Rather than going into every single one and changing that factor. Um, I quite like how Unreal does this, uh, and, and you can do it straight from here, and you don't have to go into a third party application just to edit something like this uh, you can just do it straight here with a couple clicks of the mouse really um so what is left to show you um i suppose the rest of it is pretty standard so again like the flies i've, I've added in a, a certain attenuation to that so obviously you hear the flies near it but then it, it, it's it's quite a steep fall off because as you leave the, the actual area of this lamp, the, the flies won't be very loud. Obviously, if you're standing here and right under it, you will hear them quite loud, but then as you walk away, you won't hear them that much. Um, but like the birds and that, these also have the attenuation spheres set externally here. So that, that's all I wanted to show you today and, and sort of what I have learnt about mainly sound cues and attenuation and and, and sort of how I, I creatively approach things, uh, especially when it comes to atmospheres. Because as I say, like, during a game, um, it, it, it's strange because a good atmosphere, if anything, won't be noticed that much. Uh, obviously, if, if, if the game falls silent like it does now when you reach, like, the lake and that, it does sound very odd. Um, but obviously the average player won't be walking around focusing on the birds and focusing on the well, but when they approach, say, a fly around a lamp, they would expect to hear it, or a windmill turning around, they would expect to hear that as well. Um, so it's, it's just little things like this and thinking, even just walking around the game and like analysing little things and thinking, okay, what's missing here? What could I add here? Can I afford to add something here? Um, and, and, and I know obviously in a project in, 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 in the real world, obviously the, the lead audio designer or the director will sort of tell you what to add where or how they'd like things to sound, but... It, it, it's well it, it's nice adding a creative touch on how to stop things becoming boring i also like adding a um atmosphere that's quite random that it becomes unpredictable and obviously not too unpredictable like the wind suddenly turns into something completely else but obviously it, it, it's just sort of because you have all these randoms going on uh it, it, it's a bit like the blacksmith i don't know how many times he's going to hit it next i don't know if he's going to drop something um and and, and again it, it's just like a real human being sir because obviously they're unpredictable um you, you don't know what their next move is going to be um so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of, of what I've been doing over the last couple of days. Um, I will have more videos coming. In in, in the meanwhile, I, I, obviously I've, I've got to go in and I'm learning as well at, at this present time. If, if anything, these videos help me as well just to sort of 
break down what I've understood and sort of showcase um, what I've understood. And, and if anything, a resource to go back to and, and see if I have an error uh, where or maybe I'm going wrong. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully in, in the next coming videos, I will have like more on, say, blueprints. And I know I want to work with like box colliders more in that. So. so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I will catch you all in the next video.